when we uh, planned this growth net, it was four years ago. Mm. And we thought that the emerging economies are really central in, in the growth process in the world. Mm. And we need to do something like this to bring people together and share. And I think the concept is great. But in the last few years, no question that the emerging economies have been going through torrid times, mm. you know, really tough times, mm. uh, and including India, mm. uh, you know, was going through. But when I look back, we are in the third meeting, finishing it, we are uh, seeing the need even more to get people together mm. because the emerging economies have made major mistakes mm. on policy. They have made major mistakes on governance. Mm. Uh, they've made major mistakes on just economic issues which have to be addressed and how to get more growth going. Because everybody's growth has been down, you know. And uh, so when you say mistake, can you illustrate that? You know, for example, let's take the subsidy mm. regime, mm. you know, which is taking money out of the government. Mm. Uh, coffers mm. and giving to the poor. Mm. Very laudable, very necessary to mm. do that and subsidies have to continue. But the management of those subsidies, mm. uh, managing the fiscal deficit, mm. uh, managing your inflation, mm. you know, because this, this is all interconnected. And mm. I think the emerging economies have screwed up mm. badly. Mm. So India actually is in a much better place. So you asked about how has India evolved. Mm. Up to last year, mm. 2014, India was in a bad place. Mm. People were switched off India. Mm. Today, people are finding and feeling that India is central to the global economic growth because even China's growth is going down. But India is looking good now mm. and is turning around slowly. So growth net concept, great. Uh, unexpected turbulence mm. in the growth and in emerging economies. Mm. Uh, through the years, suddenly we're finding India doing better. Uh, we have a stronger government. We've got a focus on economic growth. We also concurrently have a focus on poverty and subsidy and all of that. But there is a sort of a determination to manage it better. Hmm. You know? And I think that's a lesson for all emerging economies. Right. So if we were to now spin forward, what is, what's the unfinished agenda? Because the promises have been made. <laughs> Uh, the the vision has been articulated, uh, but things need to be done. But and talking about India, India specifically now, I think specifically on India is implementation. I think we need to get from the macro, hmm. from the vision and the objectives which the prime minister has put out hmm. or the finance minister has supported through his second budget. The first budget was a disaster. Hmm. Um, I think we need to find people hmm. who can implement hmm. and. I have a feeling, been around for over 50 years, you know, in, engaged with industry and economy and working with government. I think the machinery of government is a little rusted mm. uh, over the years. And I'm not finding the people who have that managerial capability to get it done. You know, manager's job is not to frame policy. Mm. Their job is how to do it. Mm. and get it done, get it done on time, ahead of time, uh, within the budget, you know. And I think in the rusted machinery of uh, large sections of the central and state machineries, I think we are finding, I'm finding that there's a weakness and an inadequacy. And I think the prime minister and his colleagues will have to address that issue. Okay. So, I mean, so there could be a long-term fix and there could be some short-term fixes. Yeah. So, what could they be? You know, the... Long-term fix, of course, we've got to get infrastructure right mm. and get those projects moving. And I'm happy to see that Prime Minister personally, backed by his senior ministers, is focused on that almost like a day-to-day -day mm. thing. What I'm talking about is after those meetings, mm. who is going to get something done? Um, I got a paper done on our strategy for high-tech manufacturing mm. because Prime Minister is talking about make in India mm. and high-tech manufacturing is a place we need to be at. Mm. 
outstanding paper has been done. Research, data, everything, global data, Indian data, and the way forward. We made presentations to the government four months ago. It was a great meeting, but after that, nothing's happened. So that again reinforces my worry about implementation and right. follow through. Right. So this is something which, which needs attention at a high level so that the long term will be taken care of. Right. You know, this right. needs to be taken care of now. Right. Okay. So that's on the government and policy side. Yeah. On, the, on the corporate and business side, what, what can corporate and business do better or differently here on and or as a continuation of the past so as to build on opportunities that are there in the marketplace perhaps, yeah. either Indian or global? I think corporates uh, today mm -hmm. are reminding me of the early 90s mm -hmm. and the mid 90s. I didn't think that we would revisit history again. You know, Govind, when uh, competition started, mm. there was pain. Mm. And corporates had not faced that pain of competition. Mm. So they were crying. Mm. And in the words of Rakesh Mohan, they were whining, mm. you know, <laughs> and about competition and the pressures. And I remember in one of my uh, CII board meetings, I was told by a very leading industrialist who's still around and very much there. He said, you are selling out India. We will all die. Mm. Why are you pushing liberalization? I said, I think you underestimate yourself. You, know? you have low self-esteem. You're capable of much more. And we have seen them making that transition mm. to competitiveness against global competition. But today, again, people are wanting to hold back the future. Mm. We are investing abroad. Mm. We are competing globally in America, in Europe, in Southeast Asia. Why are we worried about tariffs vis-a-vis -vis imports into India? Why are we putting up non-tariff barriers? Where does the pressure come from? Pressure comes from corporates mm. into government. Mm. Why? But you're seeing a lot of that right now. I'm seeing that again. Mm. So I think we need the government again, as they did in the 90s, mm. to say, no, you are, actually you are competitive. Mm. You are not in the 90s position mm. where you know we needed to maybe slow down a bit. You're doing great all over the world. Mm. Your entrepreneurship is, is renowned. Your technology is terrific. Uh, what are you worried about? Let's go. You know, free this country, open mm. up, it, just allow every, I mean, let's, we needed FDI caps mm. in the 90s because we had no opening to FDI before that. We don't need FDI caps today. Mm. We need a trillion dollars of foreign direct investment into this economy in the next 10 years and we can get it because China got a trillion dollars of FDI in 12 years. Mm. But today, we are the center of the world mm. as far as attraction is concerned. Open up, remove FDI caps. If you just remove that and say to companies, you can invest here, just report to the RBI or the mm. DIPP that you're doing this, end of story. You don't need, you know, and you go for your environment clearance or whatever you need. Those are uh, legal issues which you have to take care of. But free the economy completely. Yeah. SMEs mm. who will generate employment, not the large companies who will go for robotics and automation and, all, and capital intensive technology. SMEs, no inspectors for next five years. Free. Do generate economic activity, production, and jobs. You know? So I want to see a different mindset. Right, and and most critically, as you said, it's it's also uh, upon. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, business has to do its bit yeah. by oh, uh, being or feeling less protected. Don't, ask, don't for ask for protection. Don't ask for reservation. Yeah. Don't ask for anything. Mm. You, you are competent now. You are competitive now. Let the whole world come here, and it's right. your home turf. You're playing at Eden Gardens. Mm. You're not playing at Melbourne Cricket Ground or Sydney Cricket Ground. <laughs> what are you worried about? This is your home turf. Others will come here. You have a huge advantage. Right. Right, Mr. Das. Thank you okay. so much for speaking to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.